people were asking about the the Jeff Basker experience. You came up under Jeff, yeah. working with him. You did it. I think you did Most. a publishing deal with him or something. Can you talk about just how that came about or what that was like? Because you know, there's a lot of people who watch these things are like, "How do I? I want to become an assistant to somebody. I want to have a mentor. I want to." Um, not that we'll give them strategies exactly how to do that, but maybe you can talk about that a little bit, how that came about, what that experience was like. I mean, I could talk about my relationship with Basker like pretty like extensively, but just to keep it kind of brief and maybe hit on the specifics of the assistant side of it. Cause I mean, you know, my relationship with Basker, that, that, that's, you know, that's my story. Like that's how, yeah. you know, I was you know, playing in bands and I always loved and music was my life, but you know, I was sitting in a, I was valet parking in LA and just kind of like trying to figure out what you even had to put one or two together. And then all of a sudden I got a call from a friend that I went to college with to go be this guy's runner for a day. And when I was 24 <clears throat> and you know, I How, showed why, did you, up. why did you get that call? Who, who, what, what, what was the, how so it I had a friend who I knew from college who was working for Jeff's. He was he was the assistant for Jeff's manager. And he got the job through something like uh, through another friend who she got the job somehow and at Interscope. Um, and he he was like uh, this guy, Neil Jacobson and, and uh, shout out to Nick Groff, who is still in the business, does amazing things. Um manages amazing people he called me and was like hey can you be a runner for uh producer jeff baskin of course i knew his work but i didn't know the like name which i think is you know very common for as you're kind of putting things together in in life to maybe not even know that you know not know a ton of people's names and just it was and, and also he was at that point in his life like i showed up day one of him working on the fun album like officially kind of getting into it and and uh and yeah, it was, it was, it was incredible. I mean, it's, it, it requires, if you're going to be an assistant, do it right. Like, um, it's funny cause I watched this Fantano interview with Blake Slackton and he did the exact same thing that I did. We both didn't show Basker like, cause Blake was kind of doing it for Benny. I didn't show Basker and I was doing it for, but I didn't show Basker music. I didn't want to like engage him in music. I just wanted to be an awesome assistant and I wanted to learn because, mm. and, and so many people are just, they're so ambitious and so eager. They don't know how to just like do the job. You're again, do one thing. Don't do two things. Don't be an assistant and try to become the next best producer. Like just do your one thing and do it well. And then when things naturally happen, they're going to happen. Like, and I, I get really annoyed when people start to like overcomplicate situations and be overly ambitious, like ambitious in a way that's like, yeah, no, of course you want to be a famous songwriter. You're a musician and you're in music. Like, it's like, of course that ambition exists, but that's not what, but like, I, and, and I can't say this enough. Like for me, it was always like, I didn't want to be a problem for Jeff to solve. I wanted to solve problems for him. So I was going to go get him dinner. It's going to go clean up the dog shit every morning and like do whatever it took and and then next thing i knew he started naturally just being so curious as to what i did musically and everything like that that we started engaging and that and that's what it came from it didn't come from like me going in there being like oh this is awesome i'm gonna get on this fun album like no i was like i'm gonna get everybody the right thing and that's all that i'm gonna do and he i think and and to be honest it's emotionally by the time he came around to listen to my music he felt for me you know he cared about yeah. me you know i didn't go blazing in and just expect so like there was this emotional connection that even if i showed him like uh which i showed him one song he showed me told me like that's the worst music i've ever heard and it was so great because like i could show him that and that's not gonna end the relationship because i'm not what i am there for and like and i just think so many people they're just like they just don't understand the, uh, I don't know, for me, the value of doing one thing at a time cannot be overstated in my life. Just do one thing. Just don't try to do it great and be committed and do, to it. Yeah. And, and cause it's the same exact thing that I told then like I had this kid, Sammy Witty, uh, who I had flying out from Berkeley, who like just was on like the SZA album, did stuff on Harry. And he just, all, I could just tell he just wanted to be there, you know? And I just, yeah, yes, you're the man. I love that you want to be there. 
but also don't forget everybody wants to be there. But what you have an opportunity now to do is be a good engineer for me because I don't need, like, I got good songwriter friends. Like, I, like, Jeff didn't need me to program shit. He had a meal. If he needed some drums, he could call a meal Haney. Why does he need me? Like, it's just, it's just like illogical to try to think that you're just going to step into a high level situation and be valuable as just, you know, it's just like, that's not how it works. And like, if it does work out for you, then like good for you, but it's not because you like had some sort of scheme or plan. It's just because it worked out. Like, and so, and I watched Sammy go like really listen to that and just focus on engineering. He engineered the whole fine line album for Harry. And now he's off doing things. And, 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 he, and I just like, like, I just, I just think if you're, if you're interested in becoming an assistant, don't be so scheming about it. Just know why you're there. You're there to be around good music. If it doesn't work out for you, if you don't end up getting cut, you're probably going to be way better at music just being around people really doing it one day than if you just, and, and you know, and stop, you know, don't, just don't be entitled. Like, accept that you don't deserve anything. Like, and nobody owes you anything. So just like, and those are things that are required. If you, if you want to be a part of somebody else's team, from like kind of an assistant standpoint or come in as an engineer, but you want to be a producer, like just be, be there for the job that you're hired for and do it great and be likable and accept that there's not really like a play that you can probably make to like mind fuck people into all of a sudden making you famous and successful. Like, and just give it a second and let it in. Like, if you're good and you're in that environment, it's going to happen. Like I'll never forget. I was helping Basker move furniture, like the craziest day, like, like moving furniture into this new place, like the most crazy shit. And then I was like, Hey, can I show you something? This was like two years. And I showed him the start for burning house, which ended up going number one. It was one of the biggest songs I've ever written. And he goes, that's cold next day. Or like two, a week late, later, cam was out there. He wrote the chorus with us. And a year later, it went number one at radio. And like, still to this day, is one of the top selling female songs in country music. And like, I, I wasn't walking in there with, here's this idea. And I'm a musician. I was like, it was like a relationship. And that path is the one that I took. But, you know, if I was to go back and had walked in day one and expected that to happen right then, it just, A, it wouldn't have because my music wasn't good enough yet. Like Burning House, that intro, that <clears throat> verse and that guitar part, that was worth showing him, you know? So it was like, it, it all, it, it kind of worked down that way, but I just, I, it's, it's such a awesome thing. And it's so part of our industry to come up underneath people as their assistant or their engineer, not doing the exact thing that you want to do and kind of taking a back seat for a second. And I think that's a beautiful thing, like just traditional mentorship, you know, like, and having to put in your time and pay your dues and delay gratification for much greater gratification. I think that's, I, I personally find that to be like an awesome, that, that's like a good story versus kind of just like, oh, I just, you know, got handed everything and I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think though those things do happen, I think that it's a lot less, uh, there's a lot lower probability it'll happen to you, whoever it is that's hearing this. Like if, probably won't probably won't get handed to you it'll probably happen through one step then another step then another step and so on and so forth i love but, i love what you said uh, uh uh that you wanted to solve problems for him not cause problems for him like that is just the most like it, it's really on some level the same thing you're doing now it's a, it's yeah. a desire to <laughs> it's a desire to figure out how to help the process along and when you're early and you're starting out and truthfully and it's kind of, i mean you implied this a little bit so i may i may be uh, reading into it too much but the idea that you didn't you didn't really play something for him until two years in you probably didn't know at the beginning of the process obviously nearly as much as you knew a couple of years in being like okay i'm around these people the standard is really high it takes a while to understand and by solving problems and seeing his workflow and getting things done, okay, this is what it is to be at this high level. I need to reframe, you know, part of part of being an assistant or part of being around great people is really absorbing 
the talent and the quality and understanding the standard is a different thing than you've been doing before. That's the beautiful thing around about hanging out with talented people. That's essentially why I became a producer is I liked hanging out with people who did cool shit that I didn't know how to do. And then I was just <laughs> yeah, like, 100%. I want to figure out how to do this. And it takes a long time to do that. And I think to your point, if you get in and go, what can I do to make this process easier for everyone? That's basically going to serve you from being, it's basically what Rick Rubin does. He inspires a lot more, but it's a lot of like, where are the, where are the, the roadblocks? What can we do? How can I inspire this person to make, to make them great? How can I provide for them? It's really like a service job um, with a whole lot of weird whispering and skills and potential tools and things. Yeah. That's, and like weird, it, weird end goals. You know, the nice thing about service jobs is like traditional service jobs is you're like, oh, we are fixing this thing. And there's like a kind of a zero sum almost thing to the whole thing where, where with us, it's like, it, it, you don't know always what it is you're making things for and what the whole goal is and you want it to be. And I think you said this last night we were talking, it's like a combination of like, you want it to be artistic, but you want it to be successful and where does that all meet? But at the end of the day, I do think you're right. Like kind of being there to help people solve problems is pretty much the job. It just is nuanced and kind of can be kind of confusing, but I, I definitely think, though, um, if, you, if like, I mean, for me, being an assistant, it was hard. I had to, you know, swallow my pride a lot and put things on the back burner. And But, I mean, to to be around him, like Basker, when he's, because he, he had done 808s and Heartbreaks and Dark Twisted Fantasy. And then to watch him do, like, fun, he pretty much was, like, fun, and then, like, the Taylor stuff, and then uh, the Bruno stuff. And then like this girl's on fire and then um Uptown Funk. I was that was when I was around him for that run there. That's and a to watch crazy the people he was around. Run. To watch the people he was around. He he had, you know, it was his first it, with Fun he got his first number one single, then with Pink and uh Nate Roos, he got a second number one single, and then with Uptown Funk he got his third and to watch him like do all that while winning the Grammys and then kind of finish with winning producer of the year. You know, it was, the, I mean, it was some of the best times of my life. And I talked to him all the time. We like all agree. Like it was, we were at this house in, you know, in, in Venice and he lived in the house. We just worked out back and it was just fun. Like, and we were in it and like, you know, it's, it's just, if you get an opportunity, if any, if ever I, you know, it's just great to be around creative people. And there's a really good chance that most people just aren't needed for their creativity in certain situations and to be able to put that kind of ego aside can get you a lot of inroads. If you're not already cutting, if you're, Hey, if you're cutting it and you're, and you know, if you're 19 year olds and you're, and you're doing all the cool shit and you're part of the thing, like this isn't, you know, this isn't that thing. You know what I mean? This is for people who feel like they have more to learn before they feel like they're going to be able to competitively like deliver, you know, and, and like, it's going the assistant route and just being a part of somebody's team is it, it's a it's a very viable and um but i think it's only a win-win because worst case scenario you just are around it, it getting done instead of just pretending to you kind of filling in these crazy gaps like wondering i wonder what all those people are doing when they're making those hit songs it's like oh just go work for somebody who's doing it you'll get the answers you'll realize it's nothing really novel but there is differences and then you'll go home and you'll all of a sudden be way better. Even if they never listened to your music and you hated their guts cause they were pricks, but like you still learned something, you know, like, so which basker, by the way, was very sweet yeah. man, and he treated me like really awesomely. So he was not one, but, um, <laughs> people can be, but <laughs> they exist out there. <laughs> they exist. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. There's no Patreon. We don't read ads. We don't have sponsors. We're just trying to build a knowledge base. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks so much.